Okay, today I'm going to show you how to use the bamboo paper towels to grow some microgreens. This seems to be working pretty good, so make sure you stay to the end of the video and I'll show you the trays that I have growing um, and how they're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and get some more trays growing. I usually try and plant every third or fourth day, which I'm way behind on, but if for myself, because I eat, you know, Oh, one, one of these usually lasts me about two to three salads. Um, so, you know, like I say, about every, about every three days I go through, three to four days I go through a, a tray. And some days I eat more, you know, it just depends on what I'm doing. Or, you know, how big of a salad I want. And what I have growing in it makes a big determination in that too. But anyway, let's get on with this. I just want to show you how I set it up. Um, this is more like a fabric. It's supposed to be a reusable paper towel, which you don't want to reuse when you're growing microgreens because the bacteria and stuff. So it looks like I use three, somebody was asking me that, three sheets. Because you have to have your drop downs to wick the water into the plants. So what I did last time, see if I can do this with the camera in the way. So I just folded it in half. And laid it across here. And then I took this tray out and I just kind of dropped it in here. So you uh, get it to the bottom. And I just took this one and kind of pinched it over and then dropped one side this way and one side this way. Now, I've done this with the, uh, the full 1020 tray. And what I found is right in the center, it wasn't getting enough water. And I was hoping with the slots in the tray that, you know, it would wick up through the roots enough and it would work. But it, it just didn't because you had this real tall plants all the way around the edges and not in the center. Now these two trays I'll show you here at the end of the video seem to be doing pretty good with this method. So I'm going to do it again. And what I do is I just kind of lay it down in here. And usually I'll get it wet. I almost thought I forgot to grab some. usually do. So this is my water mister that I use. And it, you, you charge it up, and I tell you it lasts like six months. It just lasts forever. And uh, so that works really nice when you're doing a bunch of trays during the germination. But you can get you one of these guys, the, the pump-up style. They work just fine, too. But anyway, you just want to, I'm going to go ahead and mist this down a little bit. And I usually get the tray wet, uh, or I put some water in the bottom of it. So it go ahead and, you know, it starts wicking on its own. But I just try and get it. You have to drench it, but just get it a little wet so you can get it to lay still where you want it to. You don't want big ridges in your paper towel because then that causes clumping. So make sure you're pushing it up against see, this here and up against. And then just take this and lift it up and fold it under. And sometimes you have to make sure you hold it with... Um, you know, flip it in, try and get it to stick to the bottom of the tray when you drop this down in. And then it will fall down, you know, where it should. Okay, so that side's ready. Let's go ahead and spin it around here. I'll do the other side real quick. <clears throat> now, I've been growing for a couple years. And I started with coconut pads, which uh, City Hydro, Larry, he's awesome to learn from. And I just try and find different ways to grow. I'm always trying different ways. And this way is, I'm always trying to find a way that's, you know, a little cheaper so everybody can do this. I want everybody growing microgreens in their house. I mean, this should be like, I don't know what's most common in a house. Hopefully uh, shampoo or something. But, you know, it should be like in everybody's house. Everybody should have microgreens. There's no reason... Now we can't take a little time and grow some microgreens. Just the health <clears throat> benefits from it is amazing. Because we'll all take 
powders and shakes and all this other stuff, but there's no replacement for, you know, plant vitamins, nutrients. Yeah. Right in there. Boy, I don't have a whole lot of flap here, huh? Must have put too much down the center. <clears throat> That's okay. I'll use a shallow tray on this and I'll fix it. Yeah, I got too much in the center, but it'll be all right. It'll still wick. And Because um, I'll show you in these other two trays, I did, did one grow with the deeper tray so you don't have to water it as much. And then if that's the case, you have to make sure you get your paper towel down in deep. And, um, and then I did one with a shallower tray, then it doesn't matter as much. But you have to fill it up about every, oh, every other day, every day once the plants start really drinking. All right, so anyway, let's get on with this. So I got my favorite shaker here. And today we are planting romaine. So let's get some romaine going in here. Or no, no, this is bok choy. It's like, that ain't romaine seed. So anyway, and then... These rolly dudes. These seeds that just want to roll around on you. I'm going to go ahead and knock them with some water. Kind of keep it up high so you ain't blasting them away anywhere. But get them wet to where they'll kind of stay in place. As you move this tray around. Okay, and then my all-time favorite is mustard. <clears throat> now I talk about my seeds for a minute. Um, I get my seeds from True Leaf Market. And uh, this is the Red Giant. And of course, uh, make sure you get organic if you can. I mean, I mean that's a must. Just get organic. Let's just put it that way. And... Uh, My favorite part about mustard is, is it's, you know, it's spicy. It's got some kick to it. So, for years, I had, you know, everything I ate was bland. No seasonings, no pepper, no nothing. Because my digestive system was too tore up. And that's what, you know, nobody's going to tell you is that the Roundup, the glyphosate in our food is punching holes in your digestive system. It's our IBS, leaky gut. All kinds of health problems. So I'm going to go straight out of the bag here. Don't suggest this. The shaker's a lot easier, but I'm just going to go with it this morning. Oops, see, I got a little thick right there. But anyway, mustard has got spice. You know, it's you know, it's got some fire to it, but it didn't. It didn't affect my stomach, you know. It's not like eating a jalapeno and it tears your guts up. The other great thing about mustard that you may not know is it's very high in nutrition. It's right up there with kale. And most people hate kale because of the way it tastes. Well, you need to grow some baby kale because it tastes great. And it's water rich. That's what I love about the, the bok choy we put in first. It's it's really water rich. It's a it's a Japanese cabbage. It's got some great nutrition. But what I started with was broccoli, kale, and mustard. And uh, the you know the kale's kale. It's really high nutrition, and. Um, the mustard just gave it some flavor. Okay, let's get this video done. We're way over time. So this is the shallower tray. So I'll put put these guys in one of these shallower trays here in a minute. Since my paper towel's a little screwed up, I didn't, you know, I didn't really want to cut and waste one. But you need to make sure that it's going clear to the, the bottom of your tray here, you know. And I just put too much down in the center. And it's kind of, I'm working around this camera and, you know, giving me a little trouble. So anyway, then I take the, this, another one of these trays, and I wet it down, get it all wet. And you do this for three days to five days. Depends on what you're growing 
and how things are going for you. Temperature of your room, all that good stuff. But anyway, that will help it germinate. So I'll just go put that on a shelf. And uh, twice a day I will have to go in and mist it. But just do that first thing in the morning and just before you go to bed, you know, take care of your baby plants. And you're good to go. And they're, like I said, they're just, I, I, I'm speechless. Because <laughs> they've saved my life. And they really have. And what I love about it is it's um, nothing but God's seed and water. Now, we're going to go look at my microgreens. Sorry, we are not quite done. And maybe mine aren't the biggest microgreens, but you know what? That's the trouble we have now with big ag is it's all about yield. We need to get that out of our head. It's not about the biggest plant because if it's, it has no nutrition, like our, a lot of things we grow now, you know, the protein levels are in the toilet, then, you know, what's, what's the use? So, and I also grew that first year with uh, distilled water just to keep it clean. And I'm going to go back to that because I felt better. Say hi to the fishy dudes. Growing some good stuff there. All right. So anyway, we'll go in and look at these and see how they're doing. I snacked on this one a little bit. I couldn't resist. But they're looking good, you know. And see, this one has the shallower tray, so you got to water it a little more often. But they look good. They're doing good. They're growing. And this is uh, romaine here, so this is doing real good. Nice and thick. So it makes a nice salad. I always like to pet them a little bit, knock the seeds off, give them a little stimulation. Um, I have this for circulation. And also helps with mold. Anyway, went way over on this video. Uh, please like, subscribe, share. And we'll see you on the next one. And grow some microgreens. Take your life back.